if we think of health, we probably think of eating healthy, uh, physical exercise, training our six packs. But our mental condition tends to get only get attention after something has gone wrong. But just as your physical muscles, you can also train your mental health. That's why we're gonna start some mental sweat here, dripping in the, in the room, and we start with a short mental warming up. So please close your eyes. When you close your eyes, think of a good friend that went through a difficult time, felt stressed, had failed, and how do you respond to that good friend? Which words do you use? Now, think of yourself that went through a difficult time, felt stressed, had failed, and how do you respond to yourself? Which words do you use? Okay. You can open your eyes again. So, what strikes you between the two versions in relation how you treat yourself in according to how you treat others? So, can you raise your hand if you treat yourself with more harshness than others? Can I see? Okay. Waving. Hi. <laughs> and uh, can, uh, can you raise your hands if it's more imbalanced? Like, no, you treat yourself with the same harshness as others? Not less. Are there also people in the room that are more friendly for themselves than for others? <laughs> One. Okay. So that complies largely with science. According to science, 80% of the people treat themselves with more harshness than others. With 18%, it's more imbalanced. And with only 2%, they treat themselves with more friendliness than others. I have a question for you. If a good friend says to you on a daily basis, you're such a loser. You can't do anything. Ugh, disgusting pimples you got. How long will that friendship last? I presume not so long. I'm talking about our inner critic. Uh, how many words do you think we speak to, per minute to ourselves? 300 to 1,000 words per minute. And when we go through a difficult time, the tone of our inner chatterbox becomes hard and severe. But I can imagine your inner critic is there for a reason. Because imagine this is a magic wand. And I would make your inner critics disappear with a spell. You don't have any inner critic anymore. What would be your fear if you don't have any inner critic anymore? What, 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 what do you fear? Yeah? I have 16 minutes. <laughs> yeah? Sorry? Aeroplanes, yeah, that we can't correct ourselves and also that we can't motivate ourselves. So let's do a short exercise to see if our inner critic succeeds in doing that, in motivating us. So please stand up right now. And it's a very special day today because today it's the World Championship Making Embarrassing Movements. So there's no music, but you can make as much noise as possible. So when I count down from three to one, you go totally bonkers, like <laughs> totally crazy, okay? There we go. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Sorry, could you come on the stage? Yeah. Okay, you can sit down. What's your name? Selfa. Selfa. Yeah. Selfa, I really enjoyed your performance. You're, you're a world championship making embarrassing movements. And I really enjoyed your performance, yeah. And I enjoyed it so much that I asked you, could you do it again for the whole audience? Of course. So... so. Wow! Thank you. Thank you. You can sit down. Yeah, thanks. So, why is it that Seva, say, say I, Seva? Yeah, Seva is going totally mental, but there are also some people in the room that were standing like wet blankets, like, mm, I'm not going to do this exercise, it's not for me. <laughs> Question is, who is motivating you at that moment? Maybe you would think, what a bad example. How many times do I participate in a world championship making embarrassing movements? I'll give you another example. 
This is my daughter, Ava, and she's learning to ride a bike. Now, what happens when she falls off her bike, and I kneel down, and I say to her, little bitch, is that so hard riding a bike? Come on, get on the bike. Which result would I get? <laughs> and the funny thing is you all start laughing right now, because you think, you can't motivate a child like that. It's impossible. But you are exactly doing that in your own head. So why on earth do you think it works? There are more than 200 studies that all confirm that your inner critic works counterproductive with achieving your life goals. Because it weakens your motivation and your belief in yourself, and you're afraid to make mistakes because you get whipped by your inner critic. So if self-criticism doesn't work, what does? So what is the opposite of self-criticism? The opposite of self-criticism is self-acceptance. Can you totally accept yourself without having to comply in any precondition first? So without having to have a certain job, without having to have a certain status. But often we make a negative association with the word self-acceptance, like, uh, like it's making us lazy and indulgent. It's the wrong kind of softness. Like, like this, like, I'm accepting myself, and that's why I don't go to the gym today. But of course, that's not self-acceptance, but that, that is self-destruction. So, real self-acceptance makes you feel much safer, happier, calmer, even in stressful situations. With this in mind, it's much easier to pursue our dreams and to make a positive contribution to the world. So, the big question is, is if self-acceptance works, how do you train it? There are a lot of techniques, but I give you a very simple one. It contains of two steps. And we first go to step number one. Step number one is asking you yourself a question multiple times a day, random moments for at least a month. This question. Who is motivating you? And by asking yourself this question, you become aware of your inner critic much faster. And it's a lot trickier than you think, because your inner critic often... Here's a lot of impact on your life, but you don't hear him, he's talking. He whispers. So he has a lot of impact on your life, but most of the time you aren't aware that he is talking. It's like an old pair of shoes, which have taken the shape of your foot while walking on them for a long time. After a while, you don't even notice you are wearing them. So that's the strange thing. The more often you think a thought, the harder it is to become aware of it. So for example, if I think a lot, I am too busy, then eventually I start feeling busy. But the problem is, I'm, I'm, aren't, I, I'm, I'm not aware anymore that it's been triggered by the thought in my head, I am too busy. So it's the same story with our inner critic. We sometimes feel tired not at ease, uncomfortable, and we're not aware that it's been triggered by our inner critic. So if you ask yourself this question and you become aware of your inner critic, don't notice your inner critic with your inner critic. So, for example, if you have a bad evaluation and you think, oh, I'm such a loser, you are aware that you are thinking that, and then you think, I'm such a loser that I think that I'm a loser then that inner critic becomes even stronger. So fighting your inner critic doesn't work. Then what does? Foster understanding. Thank your inner critic, because he's trying to help you. He wants you to feel safe, he wants you to feel happy, he wants you to feel connected, he wants you to achieve your life goals. He does it in a clumsy way, but his intentions are good. So see him as the overly concerned passenger in your car, who shouting at every corner of the street, watch out, watch out! It doesn't make you a better driver, but if you thank him, it's easier to negate his advice. So now we've done the first step, we go to the second step. And the second step is to replace your critic by your coach. And you already did this, it's very simple. You ask yourself the question, what would I say to a good friend in the same situation? And exact those words you copy-paste towards yourself. So in the beginning, if you do this, it feels uneasy, uncomfortable. 
But if you really train this for a longer period of time, this supportive voice becomes yours. So, what is the big lesson of this TED Talk? The more self-compassion, the more self-acceptance, the more you can grow and change for the better. The more self-acceptance, the more you can grow and change for the better. And not only for yourself, but for all of us. Because if we, have, if we are in good mental shape, we're far more loving towards ourselves and others. So I hope you take the responsibility to really train your mind, because a better world starts with a better mind. And to inspire you to do so, one last famous story to get motivated. A grandfather and a grandson are sitting by the campfire. And the grandson asks to the grandfather, are people good by nature? And the grandfather asks, answers, within me there's a battle going on between two wolves. The gray wolf is evil. He re represents anger, conceit, lies, hate, greed. And the brown wolf is good, and he represents love, hope, compassion, truth. And in each person, the same battle rages on, also in you. And the boy thinks, and then asks, but which wolf is going to win the fight? And the old man replies, the wolf you feed. Please train your brown wolf. Thank you.